George Gelaga King is a software developer and member of the data and innovation team at the Directorate of Science, Technology and Innovation in Sierra Leone, playing a crucial part in his country's digital transformation. He has been integral to multiple projects. Please welcome George Gelaga King. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today, I'm here to give uh, reflections from a low-income country. And the funny thing is, some of the things I'm going to say, the essential bits, have already been said by people before me. So thank you very much, guys, for that. <laughs> um, Frontier technology has the power to change the world as we know it. When radical forward thinking meets real-world implementation, we can tackle some of the world's biggest problems, like hunger, climate change, and education. Picture a world where no one goes hungry. Everyone has access to good quality education, and people seldom die from communicable diseases and environmental degradation. A world that is safer, healthier, and more sustainable is possible with the potential of frontier technology. I want to highlight how it can serve as an accelerator for developing countries to catch up, to leapfrog other more developed countries, to be the best versions of themselves, to make reality of a vision where no one gets left behind. Sierra Leone recently launched its national innovation and digital strategy needs, its vision of how to make giant strides using technology. You sing, you sing Bolt-esque strides with a swagger, if we can. Uh, some aspects of this vision will change, certainly so in its implementation, but the core principles will remain the same. Okay, context. Context is always good. Sierra Leone is located on the coast of West Africa, is blessed with natural resources, has fantastic mountain ranges, beautiful beaches, diverse culture, and much more. I encourage you to visit. Come hang out with us. Uh, Sierra Leone has a population of about 7.5 million people, of which the greater percentage is under 34. The median age is 19. We're very young. Of that population, just under half is literate, with the males sharing a higher percentage of about 60%. In terms of connectivity, about 77% have a mobile phone, but just 20% have access to the internet. <sighs> <laughs> We face the same problems as other developing countries, and then some. Inadequate infrastructure, limited health system capacity, and an undiversified economy. While our problems aren't unique to us, our landscape is where the differences tend to be. All this to say that whilst the essence of frontier technology is portability, accessibility, and affordability, they may need to be contextualized a bit to fit our needs. I'll tell you a story. In June 2019, Sierra Leone became the first country in WHO Africa region to fully transform its national disease surveillance system from a paper-based to a web-based electronic platform. Electronic surveillance is currently active across all health facilities in the country. In the practical sense, what this means is a health worker enters data, it immedi it's immediately reflected in the system, and officials can make decisions based off of that data. This is no easy feat, considering the infrastructure challenges I mentioned earlier. So how is this done? Well, a success story of innovation, partnership, and inclusion. From the partners and the ministries to the communities and the health workers. Logistically, we had to overcome challenges from internet connectivity and to power disruptions to teaching some health workers how to use a smart device for the first time. You'd be surprised how quickly people can pick stuff up how humans can adapt to the changes in technology when they see that it adds value to their lives, when they feel valued, accepted, and safe. Sierra Leone's instance of its district health information software, DHIS2, <laughs> is the electronic system that has set pace for improvements in the healthcare system. It has triggered enhancements in the timeliness of health reporting, reporting rates, data quality and efficiency, and ease of data management at the national level, with a real-time feedback system to the, field, to the field level. The HIS2 is open source, well, openly licensed, 
And its core is developed and maintained or managed by the University of Oslo, as Kristin mentioned, thank you, with financial backing from NORAD, UNICEF, Berlin and the Gates, just to name a few. You see, we've really collaborated before. I'll throw some more fun facts at you. Um, to overcome the challenges faced with internet connectivity, a small team of software developers in Sierra Leone had to improvise a creative and sustainable way to get data to servers without access to the internet. How did they do this? They created a custom, customized version of DHS to Android app that could submit data via SMS, technology that had a wider reach than the internet in Sierra Leone. The impact was immediately evident. The reporting rates were higher and also faster. It was a huge step in the right direction. And you know what? This feature is being rolled out in the official DHS to Android app to be used in countries all over the world. Talk about full circle. This story emphasizes the principles of Sierra Leone's national innovation and digitization strategy. These principles are, number one, mobile, mobile first. Mobile devices are everywhere. They are relatively cheap, portable, and connected. This is at the heart of the strategy. Services should be optimized for mobile devices in both the public and private sectors. This includes how data is acquired, how identity is verified, and how economic transactions are made. Remember, the goal is digitization for all. With that in mind, we need to utilize the medium that has the furthest reach. We want to bring everyone along this journey. Number two, country as AI lab. This emphasizes the need for data and how countries must use qualitative and research, qualitative and quantitative research methods to answer the burning questions. It asks how we can deploy solutions that can scale nationwide and are sustainable. Leaders should be able to make decisions that improve society, not based on a whim, but on data and the story of their current context. Number three, hybrid technology solutions. We realize that there's no one glove that fits all, that in order to get things to work, we need a combination of both old and new, sleek and rough, online, offline, internet and SMS. We realize that sometimes we need to get creative and take the unconventional approach to make things work. As the West 2018 makes evident, there is no unique set of such technologies classified as frontier technologies. So, why take this approach? The question has been posed before. Sierra Leone is a developing country. They should turn their focus on building more effective infrastructure, improving health outcomes, and stabilizing their economy. Why should they bother with a technological approach? To that I say, having these problems is all the more reason why we should utilize frontier technologies. Technology on its own cannot make choices. We as humans must deploy technology to solve our problems. It goes hand in hand with solving the biggest problems facing our society. Tackling these problems requires strategy, knowing what is and what isn't, and how best to utilize our resources for the best outcomes. To do this, we need access to data. We need meaningful and good quality data. As it stands, there's a problem of isolation where different entities work in silos and data is sparse throughout multiple locations. Who has what? And if they have it, will they make it publicly accessible? This is a problem. It can lead to duplication of efforts, monopolization of data, and difficulty in enforcing a standard on that data collected. We realize that there is a need for collaboration to get people talking to each other. They need to have a central repository with which data can be made available. We must embody the mantra of collaboration, not only when it comes to data, but how services are deployed and how projects are implemented. To realize that, as the African proverb says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. This means that when we execute, we must not only keep ourselves in mind, but also the partners and the people. They must believe in our idea, they must be a part of it and own its success or failure. This data can then be used and analyzed to answer important questions like, how do we predict disease outbreaks? How do we identify high-risk groups for planning and resource allocation? How do, we identify, how do we understand the effect of school, students, and teacher attributes and learning outcomes to inform prioritization of education interventions at a national level? These aren't easy questions to answer when you think about it. The need to have evidence-based answers to these sorts of questions has already yielded fruit. 
It has led to the creation of services like Sierra Leone's Integrated Geographic Information System, IGIS, and Sierra Leone's Education Data Hub. These are steps in the right direction. They can enable people to make more informed decisions for better outcomes. Whether you're a business owner, project lead, politician, professor, or parent. Whilst making these services available is awesome, its full impact won't be realized if we don't build the necessary human capital to take advantage of it. We must close the gap. We must empower our people with the right skills and knowledge to take advantage of these tools. We must overcome the challenge of providing and accessing good quality education. We must also build enabling infrastructure to make future project Im implementations easier. Better road networks, better water facilities, hospitals, schools, internet coverage. We need to enable our people and our environment. The trick is how we're going to do that. Seeing this potential, seeing the, the power of what it can do, the phrase, power is nothing without control, comes to mind. That poses a few questions. Who controls it? How do we control it? Hmm. We must guide its direction with policy and regulations. Policies must match the rapid pace of technology whilst also tackling the complex challenges that it presents. These policies should seek the best interest of the masses, making sure that the tools created to improve their lives doesn't come back to harm them making sure people's data is kept safe, making sure they're aware of what's being collected and how it's used. And let's not forget, making sure that frontier technologies are widely diffused and adopted. After all this, you can say that I have a sense of optimism. You may ask, how can I? Haven't I seen what happens? The setbacks, the drawbacks, the pitfalls. In all honesty, that's life. There will always be constant challenges to which we have to overcome. They say the obstacle is the way. There are many moments that fill me with hope, not necessarily the big hitting headlines, like how Sierra Leone launches its drone corridor to deliver medicines to health centers in remote areas, a feat done by a collaboration between the Director of Science, Technology and Innovation and UNICEF. That's exciting stuff right there, amazing. It's also getting a first-hand feel of the impact being made. Seeing those nurses progress as they learned how to use tablets to enter their health data, the smiles on their faces, dancing after training sessions. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't all kumbaya by the campfire. <laughs> there were obstacles to overcome, but that's part of the journey, and it made reaching the goal all the more sweeter. Or how about the other day, I was jogging on the beach and I saw a friend of mine, he's the one who took the photo by the way, we hadn't spoken in a while, we struck up a conversation, he told me how he'd use the Education Data Hub to know more about why members of his girlfriend's family weren't doing so well in school. Ah, the warm, fuzzy feeling inside. Of course, that could have been my chest burning from the running, but I choose to be optimistic <laughs> that it wasn't. I stand here having said all this as someone who's gone through the Sierra Leonean education system. Never did I think that when I started to tinker with computers that my path would lead me here. Here, talking to all of you about what I believe and the future I hope that is possible for my country and the world at large. All it took was my, my cousin to spark my curiosity and my critical thinking. Being blessed with a family that could afford to give me a laptop, being in places with a good internet, uh, having access to two public goods, Basically, that all that would culminate in me being part of a team that would write code that would be accepted into the core DHIS2 platform and it's now being deployed in so many countries. I can only imagine the outcome should we give each and every child that opportunity. Now, wouldn't that be something special to behold? Thank you. Thank you.